yacht, Sarah. Um, we're still doing derivatives related content as part of, part of our calculus series, and today we are doing some of our basic differentiation laws. Um, so here are our first six laws that we're going to go over. So this first one basically just says that if you take the derivative with respect to x of any constant, what you're going to get is zero, right? So like derivative of five would just be zero. Um, the second law says that the derivative with respect to x of x is one, okay? And this is sort of related to the next rule, which is the power rule, which says that any time you are taking the derivative of x to the nth power, you basically, you take the n, you bring it down, and then you subtract one. Next is our con constant multiple rule. And so what this essentially says is that if we have a constant inside the derivative, we can just bring it out front. And then the sum and difference rules just state that we are able to basically split the derivative over addition or subtraction into two separate derivatives. So we're going to see, this in, see some of these rules in action with this first example. So we're taking the derivative of this function. So f prime of x, what we're able to do is split this into four separate derivatives, right? So I'm going to take first the derivative of 1 third x to the third. This is going to be the power rule, right? So we bring down the, th the 3. So we have 3 times 1 third times x, and then we subtract 1 from our power. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And then for our next one, we bring down the power, which is 2. So we have 2 times 4 times x, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So this is just x. And then the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And then for the 5, the derivative of any constant is 0. So we can simplify this a bit. And we just get x squared plus 8x plus 1. And that will be our derivative. So we got to see a couple of those rules in action. Next is the product rule. So the product rule is um, what we apply when we take the derivative of a product of two functions. Um, and like with a lot of definitions, you can look at it and, you know, it might be sort of confusing, but seeing it in action tends to make things a lot easier. So we are going to take the derivative of this function. So basically, the first thing you do is just re... So we split this into two separate functions, right? The first thing we do is just rewrite the first function. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the second function, which, okay, x to the fifth becomes 5x to the fourth, and then the negative 5 just goes away because it's a constant. And then we add the derivative of the first function, so here that the x squared becomes a 2x, and the 3x becomes a 3, and then just the second function. And so that is going to be our derivative. Next is the quotient rule. Um, so this one looks really dense in the definition, but um, the trick that I use to remember it is low d high minus high d low over low low, right? Low low meaning low squared. So in this example, low, so denominator, d high, so that's the derivative of the numerator, minus high, so just the numerator, d low, so the derivative of the denominator, which, okay, 6x to the fifth, minus 12x to the third, and the 15 is a constant, so it goes away, over low low, so the denominator squared. And that is going to be our derivative. Next is the chain rule. 
So the chain rule, you can basically chain more than just two functions within each other, but we're just going to do a simple example where we have one function within another function. Basically, what you do here, we have this inside function, 3x cubed plus 7, and then the outside function is the fact that we're squaring it. So the first thing we're going to do is we just treat the inside part like it's just x, right? And we are just going to take the derivative of the fact that it's squared. So what would you do if you had x squared? You would take down the 2 and then subtract 1 from the power to get 1. But what's in the parentheses stays the same. Okay, and then we multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So here, we take down the 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so 9x squared, and then the 7 goes away because it's a constant. And so this is going to be our um, derivative. All right, um, so these are our basic trig derivatives. Um, and so there's sort of a pattern here. You're going to need to memorize them, but there's sort of a pattern. First of all, positive, 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 right? Negative, negative, negative. They alternate. These two, okay, sine becomes cosine, cosine becomes negative sine. Pretty easy. Tangent becomes secant, okay? Cotangent becomes negative cosecant. So these two are also very similar. And then these two, okay? Cosecant becomes negative cosecant cotangent. Secant becomes secant tangent. So those two are also very similar. Just putting a co in front versus not. Um, so it's itself and then either tangent or cotangent corresponding to whether it was cosecant, you get cotangent, secant, you get tangent. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how I <laughs> memorized these. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back next time with some more derivatives content.